this is going to be a purely educational video and um, I am doing it for a very specific reason and this is for Bryce and it's also going to be for Evo um, because Evo has a problem. He is one of those uh, likes to take his profits quickly because he's afraid prices will uh, go back down. Uh, and he has a very negative psychology when it comes to trading and he doesn't do as well as he should uh, because of it. Um, when you let too much fear and greed get in the way or just fear in general, uh, your, your decisions on not only on what you buy and sell uh, are screwed, your, um, your timing of that is screwed and it leads to all kinds of problems. So we're going to go over and uh, I'm going to talk to Bryce who, who did a good job and he's focused on the numbers, which you should be, especially on this triangle because he pointed this triangle out. So I want to give him a good introspection of this triangle and how I see it and how it works. And this is how it works the majority of the time, it doesn't matter, stocks, whatever you want. There's always variability. There's, there's, there's always randomness. Uh, but uh, I'm going to give you the basics, and uh, I hope you listen because this is good stuff. And you won't see it in books. Uh, most people that write books do it from a linear point of view. You know, uh, one and two equals three, and that's not always true. Sometimes it inverts and it leads to negative three. So uh, yeah. Um, so here we are with the diamond pattern that I pointed out way ahead of time. And I'm going to go over and talk to you a little bit about dominant and uh, uh, submissive uh, price behaviors. Because uh, you have, you, you've got certain things that create smaller patterns, sometimes will create bigger patterns. And um, the bigger dilution might have more of a range, but it might not have the magnitude of like a say a smaller par, uh, pattern and this is kind of like with stars if you ever studied stars there are certain stars like neutron stars uh, the density uh, compared to a, a larger uh, red giant or something there it, the calculations are way off the smaller star can have a lot more energy than the bigger star but the bigger star can encompass a greater uh, uh, more in volume. Well, anyway, I, I don't want to start getting into to that. Uh, let's focus on this and the charts. Uh, this pattern right here, I'm going to focus in a little bit on. Let's go over and see if we can do this without causing too much trouble. This little pattern that you saw right here in conformity and how it moved, if you remember, this was a trade that I had. This is a smaller trade. And it went up to this point here above the 172.8 between that and the 200%. And then it dropped back very quickly and went even lower. Um, this was the starting point to create this. So a lot of stars are binary, by the way, meaning the majority of them work in, in twos and one's usually smaller high energy and one's larger well anyway um, this kind of uh, corresponds to that so this smaller little pattern right here super high energy hits its target very quickly ex uh, extends accentuates I should say and goes all the way down to this point here which is 59 to 24 68 now, you know, as I've repeated in the past, all exchanges have different pricing. And, um, you know, so you can get, you don't have to be super exact with the numbers. You want to encompass what is the most likely. Uh, this pattern, for example, the ups and downs from the lows from this low to its high up here, um, encompasses around 15,000, all right, 14 to 15,000. That's all you have to keep in your mind, all right? That's your your primary range, okay? That's your primary range. That's your focus. 
And then from the geometry and the symmetry you're going to build, like what I built off this pattern, I'm going to give you the scenarios of how these work and how I've seen them work. And I've done this thousands of times on stocks, uh, any number of instruments, assets, and cryptos, you name it. And there's always variance because each one has its own little into syncrasies, I guess you can say, its own personality, like anything in life. Um, let's see, okay, so uh, now I've pointed out the range to you, looking at 14, 15,000 in that range there, uh, between this high here, uh, and forgive you if you hear any banging and stuff, it's because they're still, they're painting in, uh, you know, the outside of the house uh, and replacing boards and stuff. So anyway, uh, just so you know. Um, now, primary, dominant, primary support points. These dominant primary support points are this low right here and this low right here. This is your center point, by the way, of the diamond. Now I could match up the diamond perfectly, connect it to here, you know, to here, and it would probably come right to the center of this right here. It often does. That's kind of telling me something. That's telling me a story. That's telling me that my calculations are correct and it's, it's building its equilibrium, which is important in trading. Uh, when you build good symmetry and equilibrium, you get the results of uh, the movements for breakouts and uh, for um, uh, prices to range out to hit their targets, okay? That's why I'm accurate a great deal of the time. Uh, and I, I can correctly foresee what's gonna happen because I'm paying attention to what's there. Um, I don't have any emotions, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna go over this and I'm gonna tell this to Evo and I want you to listen because this is what's holding you back and what's causing you to go over and take profits too quickly and to enter into trades just because you, you feel like it. Uh, I've never seen a person take profits more quickly than this guy and they get out of a stock because he feels like it's gonna go against them. Oh my God. You know, when you do calculations, you stick to them and you feel nothing, okay? Let me repeat that, you don't feel anything. I, I watched um, videos of these guys working on Wall Street. I thought it was very interesting. Um, but they were so stressed out and they were just looking for an early grave uh, prices movement uh, <laughs> They don't care um, And if you're trying to become a fortune teller miss Cleo and uh, You want to smoke a lot of cigarettes and, and drink a lot and and do all kinds of things uh, hire hookers or whatever to go over and relieve your stress um, You're looking for an early grave and it's the same thing with the stocks you don't feel any emotions when they go up or down. Uh, you do your calculations. You do the fundamentals. You, you, you adhere to your discipline. And if you're a warrior, you'll take out your enemies because they won't have that ability. And it's a skill. And listen to me very carefully. It is a skill. Uh, you don't get moved because something tries to move you. You move because you understand what the movements will be. So anyway, we have the two primary dominant support points. These, if they get broken, that's gonna be a problem, okay? So if we look right here, this was not broken. This right here, this went down too, but it did not break. I want you to notice that's very important did not break this point, okay? Now, if it did on many other exchanges, I would have seen it and noticed it, but in actuality, this is more of an extreme move. A lot of the other exchanges had the move up here uh, in the 6,101 area, somewhere in those ranges. So it did not break this point down here, very key. So that's telling me something very important. That's telling me that the integrity of the primary buy, the blue, is correct, and that we're looking at 83K, okay? That's what's there. That doesn't mean it doesn't have to. It could break, for who knows? Maybe some news comes out. Maybe um, some giant whale 
decides to sell. This is the randomness of trading, but you have to go over and trade the numbers that happen most often, not what you know, you're trying to foretell or foresee in the future, because who cares? I don't care. I don't know what it's going to do. I never do. I just go by the calculations of what it does most often, and that's good enough, because I win most of the time, and I am an extremely high win rate. I can beat 99.9% .9 of all your fund managers or whatever, and I don't have to do hardly any of the work. Um, I could be a lazy bastard. I don't really even care about money. Uh, to me, I, I love the charts. I love the calculations, I, the math, the movement. Um, so uh, it's very unlikely <laughs> that uh, others would be able to build that kind of understanding. So if you do that, if you really put your energy and effort into this, and you pay attention to the elements that I'm telling you to pay attention to, you're going to do well. You can learn. You can learn more than me. I think there are probably people out there that know far more than me, and I think that's fantastic. Um, but anyway, uh, so uh, I, I pointed out this is your dominant support points. They've not been broken. So things remain positive. And the upside target is going to be this. Why? Because the range, about the 14 to 15K, right? All right, breakout point. Where's that breakout point from? So it's right around this right here. If we go right here, this is the breakout point, just around that 68K. 68K, 15K, I mean, what do you get? Am I saying that correctly? Yes. You get 83. You're 4.23 right up here that is calculated. I did this way ahead of time from here and here, the range that you have right down here. So that's a confluence. Now, there's other numbers that are confluences that I could go on. I'm, I'm not going to, uh, you've seen them in the other videos where this 83K popped up. When you get multiple confluences, they act like magnets, okay? And those magnets will go over and uh, have price, uh, you know, it it'll, will attract the price is basically what it does, like a magnet would do. It will attract the price. So when you have multiple um, confluences like that, that's what occurs. So we get that breakout from here at 15K. So we would be looking for this 83K. This is your number up here. This is why I said this, I, I don't know, a week, week or two ago, I don't know. Um, but I put it in the video and I pointed it out and um, that's what I'm looking at. That is your plus side, that's your plus side. Now let's say this reverses uh, and goes to the downside. Okay, now we had our center point ever here. We focused on the breakout point. This is where what's important, this breakout point right here for the geometry of this pattern, of the diamond pattern. The breakout point is what's important. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a bit of a junk in my throat, but anyway. So, uh, where do we look for a downside break? Now here's the thing about triangles. Uh, breakout points on triangles when it breaks out of the symmetry of the triangle, that is key. But on the inverse side, when it breaks out of the apex and the lows, these are your two points. All right, so here's your apex. This is where you calculate. This is not a breakout point, I should say. I, I shouldn't, that's a misnomer. I'm looking at the lows. This low right here is primary. That's your center point. Your center point on a triangle is primary. This right here is your secondary. And that is also carries a lot of weight. Once it passes this one and that one, the likelihood of us doing a full movement from the apex. Let me repeat that. This is important. The apex is where your calculations, just like my calculations from here, 
would be up to here. My calculations to the downside would be from here. So if we look from here and we calculate the same range, which is that, that 14 to 15,000, right? What do we get? So we're at 64 and we break down that 14 to uh, 15,000. What does that go to? Funny enough, it goes right down to the 50 to 49,000 area, right in here, which was the previous 172 to 200 percent range uh, from other calculations back in the day when it made this pattern up here that has not, um, it, it went beyond. Uh, so this would be a very logical point if we did get that breakdown. And it does take out these two, um, uh, these two primaries, uh, which has not happened yet. This has bounced all the way back up. This is a perfect opportunity for the people who have the negative psychology of which they're afraid or, you know, to get out or, um, you know, uh, so this, this, they're, they're all looking for us to drop, um, and they'll be selling and the big, the smarter money will be buying into those sellers, uh, the black rocks, the, uh, you know, the ETFs, the Kathy Woods, you know, they, they have, uh, their, their games are much longer. They're looking at five to 10 years out. They're not even, they don't care about any of this. Um, but this is the short term you know, perspective. The traders that work for them, they're the ones that are probably focused on this type of uh, information. Um, and they're not worried about the, the movements of this because uh, if you look at the way the volume dynamics work in here, and I watch the prints, I can tell when there's buying. I can tell when they're trying to push it down on low volume. Um, I've done that forever. That's what. Uh, that's one of my um, key skills, I guess you can say. I can watch the prints, and I can do it on stocks. I can do it on thin leaf float. I can do it on penny shares and. If I was to, to trade like that, it, it's a lot of work, though, let me tell you. I don't need to. I don't really need to put that much effort unless I get bored and want to have fun uh, because it is kind of a profitable way to trade. But anyway, um, the prints that you see here are telling a story inside of here. And it'll be interesting to see what, what occurs. I mean, there's always that chance we get back down here. And if it does, I will be buying larger amounts. I did buy um, the SUI. You remember when I told you this point right here, very key. key. You know, I, I don't buy a lot of uh, altcoins, but I, I added a decent amount for what I would normally do. And I like this SEI. Here, let's go over here. But you understand, I, I hope I give you good clarity on the diamond pattern, and that was for Bryce. I'm also going to talk about um, uh, Evo, and I'm going to talk about uh, Avalanche, which is one that uh, he should have had a free ride on, but he played a few little games, and uh, he didn't pay attention to calculations. Instead, he paid attention to emotions, and um, I'm sure he probably did a bunch of stupid things. but. I'm not going to be doing this to, um, uh, to negate him. I want to try to help him correct, and I want to show him the correct way to have traded this because he had, had some great prices. Uh, but anyway, first, we're going to focus on SUI. And SUI, I love. I think we're going to get movement that goes all the way up to numbers, maybe as high as $8. I think this is a future one. Um, SEI as well. SEI uh, might not be as uh, positive on it, but I, I, I like it as well. Anyway, we recently had this move on this one. We're going to go to a shorter range chart. You already saw the targets that I'm looking at to the upside there. Uh, when it dropped to these numbers here under a uh, dollar, 
um, I became a buyer and I got some good fills and good prices on this and um, I think that this one has a brilliant future I love the volume dynamics of it I've been watching the way that the movement has been going and the um, uh, yeah there, there's a lot of interest and it's kind of interesting the type of people that are buying it are have perked my my interest in this one and I, I've been for uh, what about a month now when, when did I start uh, really oh, change that. when did I start to really focus on this from here was the January I bought down here had this little wedge that went up here and now it's traded all the way back down to the wedge like it should that's a technical pattern I want you to pay attention to that one this was a wedge all right and this was its bottom point starting point I was buying right in that little blue box area here I was very happy with myself and you know when you get a, something that goes from a dollar to around a dollar all the way up to almost two dollars within a very short period of time um, I don't have to tell you uh, but anyway and it even went higher than that free ride I don't have to tell you about what the free ride is you guys should go through the past videos if you don't know what a free ride is and you're watching this video watch my previous videos there are plenty there do the work if you don't do the work then I don't know what to say for you if you want to be one of those people that oh yeah just give me signals and well then F you I, I don't like people like that. that that's you're not gonna get rich you're gonna do something stupid at some point and blow your money uh, but if you put the work in and you take the time uh, then you can actually change uh, to being a good trader let's put it that way and I think that's more important um, anyway it fulfilled the wedge Right here traded back down to this point and under of course that's where I started buying and it went all the way down to 88 cents I believe it was um, and I got fills all the way down to 90 cents I think that was the, the lowest point um, because the volume diminished uh, it, it, it became uh, erratic and then spiked back up very quickly but anyway that's SUI like it somebody told me that they were a buyer down here with me and good paid attention I like it when people actually pay attention to things that I say weeks or months ago they come to fruition and then all of a sudden you're up 27 percent in no time uh, you know off of a, a spot trade all right these aren't leverage trades these are spot trades uh, now if you did do a, a, lever, a you know leverage trade I hope you use good stops that's all I'm gonna say because that's a tricky game uh, you can lose a lot of money very quickly but if you do it correctly and the way you do it correctly is you risk a small amount for a profit that is three times to five times or more higher okay and you do that over and over so that way if you have losses uh, say half or uh, two out of three of, of your trades or losses um, you still come out ahead because your profits are so much larger than your losses if that makes sense uh, but uh, leverage trading is also a lot of work it's extreme you have to the focus required is a great deal and I'm kind of a lazy bastard when it comes to that's why I like spot trading um, I, I like it to be enjoyable like painting you know I'm not trying to quickly paint drawing on the canvas and da, 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 da. you know I like to do long brush strokes with uh, just calm you know I like and play meditative music in the background you know stuff like that uh, burn incense and just chill I'm a chill person I don't need to be crazy um, but that's the the uh, the idea behind it so SUI fantastic uh, now I'm going to go to Avalanche, which is one of my favorites. 
probably heard me talk about this. Avalanche went over and dropped into the buy zone down here. Uh, and I bought more of this one as well. And it went under 30 was the key point. Uh, went down to what, 29, 50, somewhere in that range right there. But under 30, anything under 31 was a great buying opportunity. Let's zoom in on this. Let's zoom in. Let's do a 15 minute. And you can see this was the area that uh, right there with all that volume. There are a lot of nervous people in a lot of these altcoins, uh, alt which crack me up. Um, but Avalanche, I like. Uh, I like it for the long term. So I bought some of that. And what other ones do we have here? But now let's go to and talk about Evo. All right, because he kind of pissed me off with some of the things he did with this. He had the perfect opportunity to trade it correctly. He was a buyer in this 24 area here, right? 24, all right? And then he sold it. All right, now this was one that goes way back. I, I don't want to tell you how low that I bought this one. Uh, but he had a trade on this and he had a, a free ride. You know what? I respect free rides. If you can get a free ride on the trade, and that means that the price goes from, uh, let's say, the 24 range, or maybe you pay a little bit more, 27, and you hold that until it doubles in price. Period. Nothing to think about. You hold it until it doubles in price. You don't do nothing to it. He had that opportunity, it went all the way up to 50. So he could have bought it at 25, 27. He could have bought it at in the 30s and just held until he got the free ride because this went all the way up to the 60s. All the way up to the 60s, all right? And now it's dropped all the way back down to around this area here in the 30s. All right, so you have that free ride right there. He should have had that free ride. There was no, I don't care about the price going back down or what. You have a game plan. You stick to your game plan. You have an idea. You hold on. You don't buy and go in and out of the stock because one day you feel like you feel like selling or you feel like buying. If you let your emotions control what you do, then you're not trading. You're just gambling and you're doing it emotionally which is the stupidest thing of all you're just you know you're miss cleo you're you're trying to predict the future uh none of us know the future uh, the idea is to make smart decisions off of what happens most often so you know i i i think evo is a great guy and he deserves better and he can do better so when he looks at a chart like this, go over and look at what you should have done. Look at what you should have done. You should have had a free ride, at the very least. And a free ride is very simple. Uh, you buy a stock and it goes from, you buy it at $1, let's say, or $24, like in, in this example. Uh, you hold on to it until you get a double in price, right? You get that double in price, it's doubled in price you take half off, all right? This is what I do. I, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell you what to do with your money. I can only tell you what I do and uh, the common sense that I use in trading. And you take half off. You lose nothing. Even if the rest of what you own goes to zero, you've lost nothing because you've doubled in price and you took half off of your investment. Does that make sense? Can you lose money? No, not mathematically probable. <laughs> Unless uh, somebody comes back and says, oh, you know what, I, I, I want the money that you originally invested, you know, and, and the government or something does something crazy, I don't know. But uh, it's not possible. So you get what I'm saying right there? That's the idea behind a free ride. And if you're new to trading, um, I would recommend taking as many free rides as you can. 
So if you get a, a, a trade from me and I say it's free money and it's a free ride, you know, pay attention because I'm not saying that to hear myself talk. Uh, I can tell you uh, from GameStop to XRP, I can't tell you the number of times I got free rides on XRP, probably uh, 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 up to like 10, uh, uh, five of them that are big points that everybody knew about, but I, I've had up to 10 different free rides on uh, XRP. But um, uh, the this is a way for you to go over and uh, build your capital. And that's important, you know. Uh, you know, you're gonna lose sometimes, everybody does, even I. Uh, and when you do, you keep your losses small and you invest less, you don't invest more, you don't try to double down on your losses. If you're losing, something's wrong. Um, and when you're winning, you invest more uh, because you, you invest in winners. Uh, that's my philosophy. I, again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you what to do with your money, but these are the fundamentals that I follow and I live by. And I hope others would live by them too. Uh, because uh, you know trading is a zero-sum game and you're uh, one guy is selling another guy is buying and they're both thinking they're right so um, uh, so there's that and uh, what was the other one that I wanted to go through I don't want to make this video so long oh um, silver silver had the breakout uh, now this is one that I've been going on about forever. And I remember my favorite buy point was the Jamie Dimon, the corrupt MFers. These bankers should all be in jail. Uh, our society in America is very kind of screwed up. We have a, a medical industrial complex that just bankrupts people, usually older people. Uh, and uh, the banking system here also. Uh, it, it's it's predatory. Uh, they're parasites, basically. Uh, we need to fix that because it needs to be more socially uh, adjusted, kind of like Europe. Um, nothing is perfect. Uh, there are some benefits, uh, but there's too much corruption. And that will actually detract. If you have an imbalance, it will detract from R&D, which you need to advance uh, any number of things, uh, medical care, um, uh, research and development for weapons. Uh, we need to have better weapons. Even though a lot of these countries like Iran, Russia, uh, North Korea, China, they're a joke, all right? Their economies are a joke, they're a joke. Their communism is self-destructive to capitalist behavior. Uh, even if you produce things in the short term, like the Chinese can do mass production, which is great because um, they industrialize their people and they factor, you know, they turn into giant factories. But um, the, the problem with that, there's no innovation and there's no, uh, it, it's, it, it's self-defeating. Uh, people don't want to work if they can't have a better life. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, and, and there's so much corruption in communism, I can't even tell you. That's why I call them crazy communists. Look what the Russians are doing to their country. They're absolutely destroying it. They're not even aware. They're going on on TV and saying how they're going to attack Europe. And those. They're poor. They're a third world country. Do not they not realize? And they're living in crap. If you see the conditions outside of maybe St. Petersburg and Moscow, if you see the conditions of their country, you just shake your head. It's very sad. And so many people are dying. So many Russians are dying for what? To kill Ukrainians? For what? Uh, to try to capture land? Because that's the only thing, uh, is imperialist uh, ideology is if they can capture the wheat fields and the production cap capabilities um, of Ukraine, then they can um, help their economically uh, for the, the, de the declining demographics they have. But anyway, the, the, the point is, 
is that you know you, you can't have good by doing bad and um, uh, this right here this support zone did everything that it was showing and there's so much corruption in our system in our capitalist system the bankers have gotten away with it's ridiculous uh, that's why they don't like Bitcoin by the way because Bitcoin is true freedom um, it is not uh, it, it's not controllable. It is pure freedom. And if you're a libertarian, you understand that the value of that. <clears throat> now, after my diatribe of just speaking my political views, sorry, uh, I do want to go back to silver. <laughs> you see the breakout on silver. It's done everything. Here was your free money point. It's done everything that it should do. Here's your bull market time. As soon as it hit there, retrace there, spike all the way up here, built this channel, and then broke out. Now, where do we go? We go to 36 is your clear target above. And then beyond that is going to be the $50 range. And we'll watch it as uh, it goes. And this is a key uh, influencer of the uh, interest rates. Uh, now, the Fed has been talking about doing cuts. Yeah, I think that's complete bullshit. Bullshit. I look at prices in the, the grocery store, and they're still going up. Now, is that because of corporate greed, or is there real inflation? I think there's real inflation. And I think that there's going to be a secondary effect. I think there's going to be um, demand destruction. And uh, we'll see. You're starting to see it now. Um, people can't sell their houses. People are putting their houses on the market, and they were getting great prices, and now all they're doing is lowering the price again and again, and nothing's moving. Uh, so that's a sign right there. So anyway, here's your breakout on silver. It's done what it, it should have done. I've talked about all the key major points. I, under, I hope you understand the... Um, symmetry and the geometry and targets of uh, Bitcoin and uh, some of the altcoins that I've moved into and Avalanche how it should have been traded by a certain person and I hope you can digest that and let go of your emotions and making emotional choices instead making calculations and don't care Look at it every once in a while, but don't care. And I don't care what you trade. Do the same thing and repeat it until you get those emotions out of your head because they're clouding your judgment and they're hurting your performance. Uh, all right, so that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a long one, um, but I guess I had a lot to say. So I did not forget the coins that you gave to me. I'm really dragging it out, though, I must say. So I'll do that as soon as I possibly can, and uh, they'll be in the next video. All right, guys, have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon.